Welcome back to the top video game podcast from HorribleNight.com. It is Tuesday, April 1st, 2014. Uh, we're pretending that it's not really a holiday, and I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined for the final time pre-Parasite by Justin Gifford. How's it going, Justin? Hey, guys. Uh, well-controlled panic is uh, probably a good explanation. I think it'll only get worse, right? Like, as, as each day progresses... Uh, and until it's actually born, yeah. I was gonna yeah, say because it's so. always one day closer, and then, yeah. And we don't know what it's gonna be. That's or fun. What it's gonna be? Like, so I posted a a thing on your um, on your Facebook page because I found a a charming uh, photograph of a, of a young a young gal playing Galaga, which is your favorite arcade game of all time. It and, was delightful. And. Um, and I, when I posted it, I was like, I, I didn't want people to read into um, the gender discussion because I know you don't know the, the sex of the baby yet. So, um, I don't. But we have names for both, so we're in good shape. But I, th- I think either way, uh, that kid will beat you at Galaga someday. So be prepared. Um, well, then it can have my lightsaber. <laughs> what else but is going on, then- man? Uh, it, <laughs> Does it honestly, matter? <laughs> it's mostly, it, mostly it's all about the child. Mm-hmm. Um you know, we're buying a new car because uh, we can't fit both dogs, a baby, and uh, dogs. both parents. Um, Never and thought then, about course, upgrading the car based on the dog, but... Mine's. Well, we got two of them. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, plus that whole yard spring cleaning thing was occurring, mm. and I decided that I was going to build a bookshelf for the kid. Um, plus, uh, I'm going to be out of work for a week. So I'm trying to get everything set up there, and that never really slows down. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on that's not me playing video games. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not all bad. Like what do I you, like doing all that stuff, but when you guys crash at the end of the night, like, are you watching anything? What are you? Are you cramming anything else in? So uh, got- I'm still working my way back through Fringe again. Uh, oh yeah. I feel like I I I think it's probably a J.J. Abrams thing, but. Maybe not just J.J. J. Abrams. I think there are some shows that are best consumed as if they were a long movie, mm-hmm. and Fringe is one of them. Oh. Um, the, you just you don't forget all of the random stuff that pops up in it where you're like, wait, what the hell are they talking about? Um, I like that so, show. The first like season and a half, uh, I watched it. I can't. I don't know why I fell off. It just. I think it was kind of one of those. I must have been in the middle of binge watching other things, and I wanted to binge watch that show, so I tried to like you know get behind so I could catch up, and I never caught up. Uh, Rider Strike, probably that too. That was in the middle. It's weird to look back at the shows that were affected by that, lost for the better. Yeah. Um, but some of those shows, it did, and and I think Fringe was also one of those shows where it was like always threatened to be canceled, so they almost always had to write themselves an out, and it just felt yeah. like they just kept kind of teasing you along and dragging you along I could be wrong. I think it was hot shit for three years and then the last two it wasn't mm. but um, you know that said I'm also trying to catch up on true detective we had to switch from Uverse to Comcast and I drilled a hole on the side of my house it was good times <laughs> I think, yeah I think we talked about that did you how close yeah. are you to like what episode you on uh, I think I just watched the fourth one because I have to watch it upstairs. And normally, a lot of my binge watching, like on a show like you know HBO, where you can really binge watch because there's no commercials, I'll do it like downstairs, ironing and doing being productive. Um, and since we switched to Comcast, I no longer have it downstairs. And for some reason, Xbox has declined to have HBO Go on it. So. Yep. I, I don't know what the hell the deal is. It needs to happen. I I wonder if it's an Xbox thing or the cable company thing. We can't get HBO Go on our Roku player for whatever reason. So it's uh, a pain in the ass because it's not consistent. So, um, But, of course, the the really weird thing is you pay 35 bucks for the Chromecast. You can get HBO on your Chrome and then put it in your TV. So yeah. them being like, oh, you can't have this on Roku. Yeah, Fuck the you. I I've had issues with the Chromecast playing videos from the browser. Like as far as like sometimes it has syncing issues. So if I can get yeah. it through the Roku app, it's, I'd prefer to go that way. But um, I've been trying to get back into Chuck. Did you ever watch that show? 
Uh, Chuck is one of my favorite shows of all time. I cried on the last episode. <laughs> to be fair, like that show had been with me through uh, a fiance, a very serious relationship, and like it was one of the few constants that made me happy in a very tumultuous period of my life. Uh, uh, but well, yeah, I, I, was, I love that show. All the reasons I disliked it when I first watched it, I love it for like just it just because it's a little bit campy you know it's just like it every moment every time you think it's going to take itself way too seriously it kind of comes back and and it it's it's really silly and i don't know um i've been having some heavy tv watching lately so uh chuck's a nice kind of lighter lighter flavor and um i don't know um agent walker is also in dexter which we kind of blew through recently so i kind of wanted to go back and hang out with her uh a little a little bit uh, longer so um yeah, well who wouldn't and yeah i guess you could always play mass effect maybe that's what maybe you've, you're onto something there well carrie go, carrie was actually finishing up dexter because she never finished the series and said oh who's this beautiful blonde woman and i was like <laughs> <laughs> that's miranda and she's like well she's naked in this episode except you only get side boob and i was like i love you <laughs> good choice um, also, a nod to the Walking Dead finale. Um, I really liked it. This was an interesting half season. Um, Please don't spoil it. I'm not going to spoil me. it. But the the final moment of the of the finale kind of noticed a rift developing between me and my fiance. We watched this show from the beginning. It was actually it, the show started soon after our relationship did. So um, yeah. But she's starting to lose a little bit of favor with the show, and like basically the show in general or characters. I think the show in general, but definitely some characters. But basically, there was a moment of the show where I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And she and her like as I'm saying that in my head, she she goes, well, "That was corny," and I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, I'll, I'll be well, interested to see if she keeps up with it when it comes back. But but I'm in. I, yeah, I was gonna say you should feel uh, blessed that your fiance is into that show because um, my wife watched uh, the end of the episode, and I don't remember exactly where it is, but the one where they're dragging—they're on the farm and they're dragging the zombie out of the well and yep, it tears that's, in half. Yep. Yeah, and she was just like, "Nope." I mean, every that show is highlighted by the fact that every episode has like the, its extreme gore moment, and um, yeah. Megan likes zombies and gore, so that works out. Um, you know, don't creep her out with things you can't see, but <laughs> zombies and gore that are in your face, that's fine. So, Let's get to the video games. Uh, top video game podcast, we uh, try to run through as many industry topics from the last few weeks as we can. And um, I'd like to start off with, uh, do you have any words for Mr. Leland Yee out of California? Um... I have generally tried to moderate to moderate my speech and language on the site. You know, the longer I've been on it, and as we've grown, um, so I'm just going to put it this way. We'll give people some background first, too. Okay, Leland Yee is a California state senator, or soon to be was a California state senator, who just crusaded against violent video games. They're going to ruin children. They create violence. Let's censor them. I don't know what the First Amendment is. Uh, and just, he was a, a bit of a fanatic. And suddenly he was recently arrested for a variety of things involving uh, public corruption and gun running. Um, he was arrested uh, by irony. Yeah, irony came to his door, followed by the FBI. Um, his uh, charging photo is hysterical. Oh, by I haven't the way, seen that. He I looks seen that. really confused. Um, so yeah, I guess the point where I'm at with regards to this, uh, you know, you've got Jack Thompson disbarred, um, and let's see, uh, Arnold's there... out of the office. Um, was there another guy in California? Was there another senator or was it, or was uh, it just sorts of the There is a congresswoman in California, U.S. congresswoman, okay. uh, whose name escapes me. But um, I tweeted about this, and I'm beyond schadenfreude, which is taking pleasure in okay. somebody else's. <laughs> somebody else's. It's a German word shot? meaning okay. taking... 
it's a German word meaning taking pleasure in somebody else's misfortune. Okay. We all know what that's like, but I'm beyond that. I, like, I just saw what happened, and I was giggling <laughs> with glee. <laughs> <laughs> just like, that is, that is awesome. Um, so I guess the real message is don't fuck with free speech. <laughs> I just, oh man. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Just how, how do you become like, how do you, when you're doing something like that, like gun running, how do you ever like put yourself out in front of a, of an argument against, I, I don't know. It's just, it's amazing. It is, it is like one of those like, tidbits and you know if they, they if they had thrown in a movie it would it, the irony is so rich it wouldn't be believable um and then um but because this also takes place in california and involves gun running i'm, I'm wondering if the sons of anarchy and in, are involved so um that was where my brain went uh, after i recovered from the irony so if if you ever get a chance to read friday by robert heinlein i know you won't but is other it, people might. is there a video game on it no okay uh, there is a part Can where I they play talk. the book. <laughs> uh, it would lend itself to video games pretty well, actually. Um, but there is a part in that book where they talk about the insanity of the California government. Uh, so, you know, huh. if you think about Leland Yee while you're reading it, you might get a kick out of it. Uh, some other interesting. And ironic news, a little bit of irony here. Um, there's a really, really great article, um, some of the best reporting I've seen in a while as far as a game journalist kind of putting himself on the line um, in relation to um, Game Jam, which is a reality show being worked on by Polaris, uh, which is one of the bigger YouTube channels that is also um, comes from Maker Studios, which is kind of owns a lot of the YouTube, bigger YouTube talent. And was recently bought by Disney. Um, granted, this all happened. This was all underway before Disney got involved. But essentially, Polaris wanted to do a game jam and use some um, pretty uh, decently known indie game developers and make a reality show on it. And when you hear that on the surface level, like one thing I like about Polaris, like I, I like a lot of the um, personalities they have on that show, and they. You know they have their shtick, but they 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 come across as genuine gamers and generally interested in and in, in what they're working on. So I think the idea came from a great place, um, and I would I would definitely watch a reality show as long as it was just you know it was a game jam. I think game jams are interesting and um, kind of going behind the scenes on that kind of stuff would be uh, really cool to watch. Um, so it seemed like a good idea, but as with all good ideas, uh, once it gets big enough to the point where Mountain Dew gets involved. Um, it might lose a little bit, a bit of its indie cred, but um, essentially, um, this reporter from Indie Static, uh, he was kind of behind the scenes on on this because he was invited as a journalist to kind of cover it, and but he also had the um, he also did freelance work for Polaris uh, as far as like video production and that kind of thing. Well, from what he, I understand, he was an independent contractor. Yes, yes. Like then, that was he was like, I've been working for these guys for a long time, but I'm an independent contractor. So when he wrote the article kind of detailing how this reality show crashed and burned in about an hour, um, he ended up losing his job um, as far as Polaris did not hire him back. So he's still uh, writing for Andy Static. But essentially he chronicled how this thing all went wrong. And like I said, if you th think about some of these indie developers who were involved and just seeing them developing games over underneath a giant Mountain Dew logo, you kind of get the the icky sense of this might be headed in the wrong direction but you know as, f as long as you know the content kind of remained true to indie uh, to game development it it probably would have been fine except that at some point the production got to the po point where they had to hire a second production team that obviously was not involved in the creation of this project that involved a certain producer that kind of was a little bit overprotective of the brands and trying to make a classic reality show and introduce drama where there was no drama by asking some of the most generic and awful, awful, boring, awful. toneless questions he possibly could. Mainly related to the fact a NASA astrophysicist, or I'm sorry, a NASA engineer might be a bimbo. Yeah, most of his questions were uh, trying to basically bring up um, some reactions to sexism, and he was just trying to 
instill drama, and that's not why any of those developers were there. And uh, essentially, after an hour of being uncomfortable and this thing kind of blowing up um, in their faces because of this one guy, um, the four indie game developers, uh, te- four, four teams of indie game developers banded together and walked out. <laughs> and that show is no more. $400,000 down the drain. And it was... But it was... It was gutsy that he wrote it in the way that he did. and But also a very interesting story and kind of glad that that show didn't come to fruition, actually. Yeah, I mean... the. I didn't even really know how to react to this when I'm first reading it because it was a level of incredulity that I was not expecting. Um, <clears throat> the tone at which it, it was like you took the caricature of <laughs> the brand rep guy of Mountain Dew from like a mid yeah like a mid '90s movie mm. and put him in real life, and it was. The, the article was extremely well written, extremely well re, um, researched, and but it, it was just one of these like, are you kidding me? I mean, I, I, I couldn't, I could not believe it. Um, the things that he said, which were, it was essentially boiled mind. down to, do you think be, that having a pretty girl on their team gives them an advantage or a disadvantage? Like, let's well, let's like start shit between the girl who did Depression Quest. I'm sorry, the woman who did Depression Quest and John uh, Tron. Th- yeah, and John Tron. So they had yeah. It's each each game development team had a YouTube personality working with them, uh, just to probably try to you know let them take the forefront while the guy the, guy, the teams were developing it. But um, apparently, Zoe Quinn. Um, creator of Depression Quest and John Tron, who were on the same team, they had had conversations before, and he basically tried to get them to go at each other and say bad things about each other. But neither of them took the bait. But he kept making yeah, both them, them more had more. integrity. Yeah, and I mean, it, it was just it, I don't like reality shows for or let me rephrase that. I love Top Chef <laughs> mostly, which is what they were trying to make, actually. Yeah, which with, it, with the exception of when they introduced false drama. Uh, I really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a huge consumer of YouTube stuff, but at the same time, I'm just reading what they suddenly were shifting over to with the introduction of the second production team and going, uh, you guys don't know what audience you're you're showing this to at all, whatsoever, even a little bit. Like, they've never seen the old soap operas where a soap company actually was sponsoring it. <laughs> This is not somebody born before 1960. What the hell is your problem? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, those questions I mean, were kind of they were out of the 60s. It was just and it, oh, we're gonna we're gonna get you a Mountain Dew Dew pack. Like, what the hell are you talking? Yeah, the two, about? the two like gifts that he brought up, that or the two awards that like they basically made them do like physical challenges in the middle of developing these games, which I didn't understand. Yeah. But as each team that would win the challenge, like they would win the Mountain Dew do pack or the chance to win a uh, membership and ID at Xbox, which they said all of these developers either have or could easily acquire on their own. Like, well, all... and they couldn't drink coffee. Yeah. So they had they to drink to say, they wanted on to camera, drink, have on them camera, drink water. Yeah. They water or Mountain Dew water out of, well, they wanted to drink the water out out of Mountain Dew cans. <laughs> the the only thing that I felt was a little disingenuous, and I have felt this way for a long time about a variety of things, anytime anybody uses the term sellout or indie, and this is going back before indie gaming, going back to uh, music and being an indignant teenager <laughs> or having friends who are indignant teenagers. Um you know, when you talk about some of the quote-unquote indie games and you're talking about some of the best-selling games of the year, and I know that's not most of them, mm-hmm. but I think it's somewhat disingenuous when it's like, oh, we've got this guy who made this game that it sold, you know, 15 million copies last year. The extent that you are the little indie developer and I live in a a loft and I work with a couple of my friends and live in a communist collective, although we report our taxes individually. Like, that's a little bit bullshit. Other than that, I, I, the, I, I'm just kind of blown away that um, this entire thing just happened. Yeah, I mean, 
Uh, Grant, I can't, I won't speak to like the living situation of some of those indie developers. I know some of them, it's a little more genuine than you might imagine, but um, especially like, I, I've just been following some of Zoe Quinn stuff lately um, in particular. But um, I wasn't trying to beat up on Zoe Quinn in particular. I'm just no. saying there are gradations of how indie yes, you are. Yes, yes, and and the indie the indie cred. So it's kind it, of but it's interesting to see if you get if you get a license, like you get really sponsored by somebody. Mm-hmm. A, you're making an you have the potential to make an ass load of money, and don't act like that wasn't your goal. Like, yeah, okay, you love making video games, but making video games for a shit ton of money? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's interesting to see, you know, the saturation of the indie game development scene and those kind of gradations exist and, and like, getting to the point where major sponsors are paying attention to indie game development. And then at the same time, this whole... I don't know, professionalization, I'm going to use that word, of the YouTubers. Like I said, these were, at one point, these were just individual YouTube channels that have now, you know, banded together to make these networks that are owned by bigger studios. And to see those studios start to deal with, like, okay, how can we almost, how can we treat this like TV? Like, that's what it seemed like to me. Like, they're trying to make a TV show. But in the old media sense. Yes. It, it's like, it was a weird a little dirty saying those things. And that's what I, I felt like it was that team of YouTubers that, that, that grew up out of that combined with the section production team that, that came from the old world. You know what I mean? Like this, I kind of researched that producer that was giving them all, all the, that was the cause of all this problem. And he's very old school. And like, um, and that, that combination for this event is just, it was asking for something like this to blow up, I guess. But I, uh, but I also think there is something to not doing a reality show per se, but doing a documentary of a game jam like this. I think would be. I, I would it, watch that. Yeah. Like when I when I read the original description of what was going on, I was like, I would totally watch that. Well, I mean, hell, indie game the movie that was fascinating, mm-hmm. and I know fuck all about developing an, a, a video game. But I just remember watching that at least until my wife called and said the power was out. But then, then and, it was awesome. And I don't think any of the fans that would be interested in something like that, that we're not watching that. We don't, we don't like reality shows in general anyway. So why somebody just thought they needed to make the reality show, like the typical reality show. And I don't think that was ever the intent. And it just, I don't know, culminated in the, that, perfect guy being in the perfect situation to ruin everything and uh i don't know it was i didn't i didn't really catch it when this was all going down i think we got that article after the fact but mm. it was i've been absorbed in it in the last 24 hours so um that's on indie static with a k, static with a k.com and and uh if you want to check the article out we'll also link it in the show notes so um the other big story, we kind of hit on this on our podcast last week, but literally the Facebook buying Oculus happened like an hour before we went live, so we didn't, it was so fresh, and uh, so I'm just kind of curious what your general reaction was and where you're, where you're at right now. Well, with a an entire week to, you know, digest a $2 billion acquisition, uh... My opinion, I don't believe, has changed a whole lot. Uh, mainly high five to the Oculus guys for making fuck you money. <laughs> um, but they betrayed their Kickstarter backers. Yeah, they betrayed them because they're, oh wait, they're still going to get their rewards. Um, no, I, we should send them death threats anyway. That was the sad news I was reading in the last two days. I was like, oh, it's escalated to that point where... Families of the founders uh, were getting death threats. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think the the thing that jumped out on me uh, the the most is you've got a combination of um, where the frick are my original notes? <laughs> um, anyway, you've got a combination of Carmack and the chief scientist from Steam mm-hmm. are working together. And they and the guy from Steam just joined after the acquisition. Like, what? You're worried this isn't going to work out? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now they. This is this is the, this is that same 
disingenuous, oh, you're not indie enough bullshit. <laughs> like, you've got some of the smartest guys in the industry working on this, and some of the other smartest guys in the industry, uh, and I'm saying this mainly from Twitter, between um, both Cliffy B and uh, one of the doctors, whose name is going to escape me for a minute, uh, have both said, this is a good thing. I, I, I don't... The only thing that I see is some sour grapes and mainly people who are pissed off they didn't make that kind of money and the internet gives them a gigantic bullhorn to espouse that opinion. It So I started looking at it like... So the week before all this was GDC and um, there was all kinds of announcements related to virtual... It was the coming out party for virtual reality. You know, Sony announces their thing. There's the rumors swirling that Microsoft's working on virtual reality. There's an Android device uh, announced, and there's other projects out there as well. Which apparently doesn't suck, which I think is hysterical. Which one? I heard this. Yeah, the Sony one got decent reviews. So Well, and the the Android one. Oh, really? The, ga- the Game Face? Is that the one you saw? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah it, which apparently doesn't suck. And it, that was the review was, this doesn't suck, and we're surprised. So, when you look at that, like, my first frustration was with Sony and Microsoft being like, well, why aren't you, you know partnering with oculus and oculus also saying we don't want to dumb down our machine for the consoles so uh, there were those are the two sides of the argument and um but when if sony and microsoft are working on their their same their same thing and for oculus to you know want to get to the point where they're basically making this device with no sacrifices for latency and for high resolution and making the best device they can but making it affordable they're gonna have to get some sort of investment at some point, like there's there's gonna have to be an, another level, game changing level. So angel investors are not gonna save the day. True. So it, it was kind of a level. They're either partnering or getting bought by some major company. And if you if mm. you throw out Microsoft and Sony, I mean that essentially leaves you with, and and then obviously Valve is off the table. That leaves you with you know Google, Apple, Facebook, and Facebook. G- <laughs> maybe uh, maybe GE. Yeah, yeah, there could be like one of the one of the more or traditional companies. Samsung, yeah, but okay, so this is one of these there are a couple of spaces where I'm very confused or maybe not confused in the right word, but the, I, I work despite the fact that I'm an attorney, I work in a technical industry and I deal mainly with contract law. Mm. Um so I have a little bit of difficulty dealing with the malleability of some of the technical companies' relationships and what they do, because Microsoft didn't used to be a hardware company. They right. were just software, and then they licensed some hardware, and now they're sort of making hardware. And you've got Facebook, who doesn't make any hardware whatsoever, but they just really kind of jumped into it here, but it, there's a lot of software. There's just a very thin veil between hardware and software now that it seems to me, I mean, like, nobody cares if you bought it from NVIDIA or Foxconn or whoever but you can put your name on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've bought the IP. Um, and Facebook has struggled since their IPO, and perhaps even beforehand, to really define themselves as, where are you going to make money? Because yeah. otherwise it's ads, and Google kills at ads. <laughs> they got it. Uh, Facebook ads are annoying, and they screw up the stream, and Facebook keeps screwing around with their algorithm, and it pisses people off. So what are you going to do? Hey, why don't we come up with the, you know, the Cadillac, or maybe not even the Cadillac, but let's let's nail something uh, else. <laughs> the VR. Yeah. And if we nail the VR, hey, you know what? We have people who can write code. Mm. Yeah. So I it, it makes sense and I don't see a ba- I don't see a downside. No, I mean as far as as long as they're true to their the that they're going to be hands off with it, I really do think they're just when you when you have guys like Carmack and one of the lead valve engineers, like you've got the brains in that room to make that happen. And Zuckerberg's <laughs> smart enough to know to not mess with them. So Abrash is and, his name. That's why I was, that's why I was looking. And, uh, I th- so I think they're going to be okay. They're going to have, you know, they're, if anything, they're going to have the, they have more res- resources to make the, the product they want to make. And, um, I think, yeah, there, I don't see I don't see the downside other than other than just like 
like you said, losing that indie cred was really what happened. And just the the emotional power that Kickstarter has, it's, that's been kind of interesting to watch, just people feeling like they helped make this. But you did help make it, and now it's going to another another level. So um, I could not be more excited for VR. I can't wait to get my hands on one. So, And we're going to have lots of options, and I still think that Oculus is probably in the best boat to uh, make something for everybody. So... Um, Hey, when it comes to market, uh, you, you may see me jump on PC, and uh, I'm not. I'm not going to buy the Sony one. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I want to jump to the last uh, big story, and I think you read a little bit of this, but it's been. I actually thought they had already gone to the New Mexico landfill to dig up all of those ET Atari cartridges, but apparently it hasn't happened yet. No, that's because you have environmental attorneys. <laughs> Where do you stand, environmental inter- attorney? Should you let them Where do go I digging? stand on this? Should you Hell let them no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. So they want to. Digging up a landfill is a horrible idea. So wait, even, wait, wait. In, even in Alamogordo, Mexico, which is outside of the Hanford Research Reactor in Washington State, is one of the most contaminated places in the entire United States because it's where we used to test nuclear weapons above ground. Maybe this will be the start of Fallout. Um, dig the wrong hole. But so they're making a documentary on. I, actually, I, th- I think it's just on the ET game and what problem went wrong, what happened, yeah. how it got buried. And so they're make, making this documentary. So they want, you know, they probably want to close the film with confirming this urban legend that millions of ET cartridges were buried in a New Mexico landfill and. Um, since that really hasn't been cons- confirmed, um, they don't know which landfill it is, and they're kind of guessing here, but they've got to get some footage to do that, but they also got to get permission to do that. And for a while it was blocked. It looks like they've crossed some hurdles to at least continue the conversation. They haven't been completely shut down, but... What happened is they hired an attorney who's now talking, or an environmental expert who may or may not be an attorney, who's talking to the Alamogordo County... Uh, waste treatment facility or whatever it's called. <laughs> I mean, the problem is it's a landfill, which is full of all kinds of awesome things like heavy metals and you have to deal with the toxic leach it protocol. Uh, and like, even though the, the groundwater is not going to show up till 250 feet below ground level, this is just a horrible idea. I mean, it's cool. Like in concept, okay, let's, like, yeah, let's reel, reel well, it back in let's, gamer. This is cool. Uh, yeah, let's dig up the results of the worst game ever. <laughs> why? But that said, why? Like, you leave Dracula's ashes in his coffin buried at the bottom of the river, you don't find it. I mean, really all they want to do is they need to, they just want to confirm the story, whether whether, like, this urban legend is true or not. That Do that with a drill rig. Yeah, like... If they can find their answer some other way, I think it's really the only other way they can end that documentary. Otherwise, um, I don't know why you make an, e- an Atari ET documentary at this point without solving that. So um, it'll be interesting to see where that actually happens. It doesn't, from your from your take, it doesn't sound too promising that they'll get through all that. I, I actually have a friend who works for the New Mexico Department <laughs> of Environmental Protection. Sure. I may, I may have to give her a I was, call. I was going to say, that should be your next, Mainly because, next interview. Yeah, my, my company owns a drill rig. Like, we'll rent it out. <laughs> like, if you want to know if there is a layer of uh, crushed silicon and plastic that's, like, discreet over an entire football field, we can find that out. It's not hard. <laughs> um, speaking of interviews, uh, do you want to talk through your, your most recent interview? Uh, I I would love to. I talked with Professor John Festinger from... I'm going to screw this up because he actually sent me a correction on it. But he's at (laughs) least at the University of British Columbia. He does or did teach at Allard Hall, which is the law school there. Okay. Um, and he wrote the book on video game law. It's called Video Game Law. It is called Video Game called Video Game Law. It's in its second edition. Like, um, and... I like I want to be this guy. He's so cool. <laughs> we'll we'll help you there. Um, I see you to copy edit yeah. about twenty more articles. I, yeah. All right. I'll get on it. 
Um, but he, he was really funny. He was really kind. Uh, he sat down and talked with me over lunch, which was like 9 o'clock his time because he's in Vancouver. Um, he knows so much stuff. Like I could have talked to him for three or four hours, and I may do that at some point because he said, give me a call back anytime you want to talk. Cool. Um, I also ran into the small problem of our hour-long Skype conversation not recording. <laughs> So I ended up Happens with the best uh, of us. three or four seconds of the Skype ringtone. I just, uh, so you did an hour long interview with him, discovered your recording did not take. And then what? 20 minutes of scrambling to jot down as many notes yeah, as you could. Furiously, yeah, <laughs> furiously pounding away at the keyboard being like, Oh my God, I'm going to forget something cool. He said, um, did but you say apparently I, I captured his mannerisms well. No. So that's good. He, he We've emailed back and forth a couple of times for some minor corrections, and he said, hey, both my wife and my former boss at the Vancouver Canucks uh, have said, wow, this guy got your mannerisms well. So apparently <laughs> I'm a good interviewer, and he used to be uh, worked for the Vancouver Canucks. So Interesting. Um, did he say, like hockey. How, how did he get into video game law? Like, um, uh, It's... It was a little bit convoluted, but essentially he got into legal practice in media Mm -hmm. with, uh, it wasn't CTV, but it was one of the Canadian media companies, which turns out after Hollywood, the Canadians turn out more like general media than anybody else in the world. Um, But he got involved with that, and then he worked for the Canucks, and... Ended up, he's got his own practice. There's the Center of Digital Media, which is connected to the University of British Columbia. He's done some other teaching uh, and lecturing, and uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, so, it, was, it was a very, I don't know, all your articles are different from, um, like, you have your own your own style and own, own topics that you take on that are much different than some of the other stuff that, you know, from our reviews and some of our edi- other editorials and this one, I don't know, just... Um, you were, it was really, a really interesting read and just interesting to, to see this different side of the industry that doesn't really get talked about too much. And you're just, you're both passionate about the topic and it was, it was pretty cool. So it could have been 4,000 words easily. <laughs> but what if, 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 if I had had a recording to <laughs> rely on, um, more specific video games. I'm mean, before we 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 let you go um, to Baby Daddy Land. Um, some franchises that are a little bit close to your heart. Uh, let's react. What words do you have for tail, Telltale in releasing their trailer for Episode Three of The Wolf Among Us? Don't be assholes. Like, if you're gonna release a trailer, release the release date. <laughs> because, like, you know, if I got three months to prepare for it, then I'm going to be like, okay, listen, this is going to come out. It's going to take me, like, two hours to play. I realize it's three months out, and we don't know how our baby's going to act. But can I have two hours? Like, even if it means I go in two hours late to work? Because <laughs> I really enjoyed this game. I-, I can't do that, and now I'm just excited about you... seeing Big B again. So I was talking to one of my friends... Um, was like a huge fan of. He, he said he can play video games one handed with the newborn. So I think you, this is one of those one handed games. So you might be able to pull I, it off. You I have adult the... sized hands, uh-huh. child sized fingers. <laughs> Problem for me. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand their advertising for the Wolf Among Us. Like I've given up on these things coming out at a timely basis. But don't give me no. Inf- don't give me. Don't pretend you're giving me information when you're not giving me information. Like yeah, at this right. point, I don't need trailers to to be hyped. Just give me the damn game or tell me when it's coming out, because I I'm fine with you just being at this point. Be dormant for six months. I don't care. But like when you pop your head back up, be ready. Be ready to let me play, or shut up. <laughs> Is that the retort to Fox News? Don't give me information and pretend you're giving me information. <laughs> you can use it however you'd like, but. Um, and then I'm curious, have you been following uh, Alien Isolation at all? Are you Cautiously. ready to get on another Alien hype Ca- train? No, mm-mm. no, <laughs> not been on the hype train. Um, Diana Laura from Dual Shockers and I went back and forth about this. 
Um, and it had a, had a not we we had a discussion about the fact that we're both cautiously optimistic. Um, mm. I, I want to be excited about it because man, it looks good, and they're doing all the stuff that came up. And I think it was before Gearbox got involved, but when Sega originally got involved with the Aliens Colonial Marines project, you know, they're reviewing like the the uh, film palettes and all this stuff, and the, we're you gonna know, do it be, right. Yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. This like is this canon. is gonna be canon. <laughs> and then you know, I pre-order Colonial Marines and I get it and I'm play for 45 minutes long. This is a shitty game. <laughs> and, oh, and this is after seeing it, you know, demoed two years before it comes out and going, this has promise. Like this is two years out. Um. So anyway, she and I both had the exact same reaction, which was, I hope it's good. Yeah. It sounds like it might be good. So here's the thing. Um, so I, I want them to, if, if you're going to do Alien in the alien sense of things, go with the gothic horror part, not the aliens part, which is uh, it, essentially based on... Game. Well, it's not just an action game. It's based on the Vietnam War and the aliens are the Viet Cong. Uh, right. The original Alien is based on gothic horror. The only thing that is science fiction about that movie is that it's in space and it's an alien. You can put that in a Scottish castle on some weird-ass island with an, a random monster, and it turns into gothic fiction. Fiction. So right. everything <clears throat> I've been reading about it, like, like I knew they were trying to go for the tone of the first Alien game. Um, but not really knowing what where the developers were pulling their inspiration from, they they did they did mention the Amnesia series uh, for this, and having recently played Amnesia, and also the game brings out a little bit of uh, Outlast for me because uh, Outlast is basically one when you boil it down is one big chase sequence through a through an as- asylum, and the problem is that is her- that is terrifying for like the first hour or two and i think this is more of a genre problem than an alien problem if i don't know how long they can keep that up and they've got a design around that like my uh, ultimately when you start to figure out this aliens tricks and whether it's cheap or whether it's smart um the horror will go away a little bit and Mm. if they you know if if, you know if it's on if it's on the same level as amnesia or outlast that's that's an that's a huge accomplishment but if they can somehow solve the genre's problem um that would be amazing but i don't i'm not confident that i'm not confident that anybody is really doing that at the moment so i i kind of just have tempered my expectations to this will kind of feel like one of those games but um will also probably miss the mark a little bit so i'm uh, if they nail it to one of those games uh, they're in the same state that horror movies were in. Uh, sure. I, I don't know. It, 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 at some point, I don't know enough about the actual horror movie filmography to figure it out. But that's a directorial issue, mm-hmm. essentially. Like, if you get a good director, they're going to figure out pacing, whether it's in a movie or in a game, mm-hmm. when it comes to horror. Um, and you know, Ridley Scott nailed it. Because it's not the the first alien is not an entire ch- the whole thing movie is not a chase scene. There's a, a secondary villain. Yeah. There's these periods of yeah. It's a good point. Boring. Um, so yeah, and, have- and that's the whole point. So if they nail that, then I, I'm cool with that. Like yeah. if you give me a ten hour game where half the time I'm terrified and or maybe even a quarter of the time I'm terrified and or engaging in serious action and three quarters of the time I'm like. You know, wander around talking to the ship's AI and trying to figure out why the company wants to bring this kind of thing to Earth. Uh, you know, it's a good game. And then again, they, so this game's coming out on October seventh. They just announced the release date, and uh, so they've still they've still got another six months. Like people have been playing it, and there've been, you know, just a lot of people not wanting to get their hopes up writing previews. Like they're like, you know, there's some there's some good stuff in here, but you know, I can also see how this can go terribly wrong. So, um. I, I I honestly hope that after this game comes out and after it's completely mediocre and inoffensive, but you know it does its thing, I hope they immediately announce another Aliens game so we can start this train all over again because of the they can't really make a good Aliens game, can they? But this next one that might be the good one. And it looks like you lost your microphone. 
Yeah, you lost your. Sorry mind. about that. All right, you're back. I think that one and when I was in high school, it was good. <laughs> what piece of that? Oh yeah, the original Aliens or Predator. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, that was that was the closest one we've had for sure. But it's <laughs> traditionally hard to make. Um, also, we don't really have time to talk through this, but I want I do want everybody to know that uh, out on. Uh, uh, there's a browser game uh, for for my girl out there. There's a my girl video game out there that you need to go check out. So, um, games of the week. Before we get out of here, I'm gonna let you. After I talk through my game, I'm gonna let you just you, you pimp any game you want because this is your last time to talk about games with us until the baby's 18. I don't I don't really know when that's gonna be, but we'll we'll figure that out. Um, you we lost your audio again. Yeah, you're I in know. and out. Who gets to play games a uh, little bit? That's true. Uh, my game of the week, uh, we played Mercenary Kings last week on our game night. and that So that game's officially out now on PC and uh, also on the PlayStation Network on all those devices. And it's it's got an amazing art style from the guys that did the artwork for um, uh, the Scott Pilgrim game. And they've kind of taken... You know their their fondness for Contra and Metal Slug, but also made a kind of a big adventure loot game around it. I also heard it described as they're using the uh, the Monster Hunter formula, in that you basically have quests that take place in the same kind of military base or mil- or, or or same stage, and you have to do different um, do different tasks, whether you're, you're collecting materials or rescuing hostages or killing a certain number of guys or and then eventually getting to boss fights and the entire time you're doing this you're picking everybody's dropping materials for you to upgrade your weapon and just like put on a ridiculous amount of like attachments and customization to make really cool guns um it also has um uh, active reload which i i like in just about any shooter so um it is much more of a grind type of game. The pace of it is a little bit slow, especially at the beginning. But once you start kind of tweaking your 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 guns out, and the difficulty starts ramping up, and you kind of get in the flow of the game, uh, we we played uh, some three player online co co op, and it was it was a lot of fun to run around with buddies after after about I would say ninety minutes of investment. So, what what's the ridiculous level of the weapons? Because. You what I'm hearing can, in my head is like you just start serious Sam stacking, not stacking, but just that. like no. just uh, there are some fantastical like um, weapon attachments you can do, but you can also like you can use a fish as a dagger and <laughs> you know and there's other attachments like that for your gun. So uh, you know just different different effects like el- elements and uh, like lightning and fire and there's just a lot of different options too. Um, the different parts of the gun and it's, 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 it takes a long while to get the, the upgrades to make that happen, but it's also really satisfying when you do. And, uh, uh, it makes it feel like your, your gun is kind of your own unique design after a while. So, which I haven't really seen in kind of a 2d retro action game. Like I've seen this in the free to play blown out 3d, you know, um, you know, traditional, uh, video games, but not, not the retro style stuff. So, so, uh, just brief mm-hmm. clarification: two uh, D side scroller or top down? Two D side scroller. So contra, huh. contra, contra metal slug, yeah. But no, like no vertical levels or anything. But it's all back and forth, going in into buildings, and it has a. It doesn't really have like the Metroid map, but it does have a map that you can see how the buildings are interconnected, and then there'll be, mm-hmm. you know, um, like key points that you want to investigate marked on the map so you have to go go over to that area like where the boss the boss might be and that kind of thing it's it's just got a lot more layers than i expected i you know i expected just from the art style and oh look this is contra so it's just going to be you know eight stages and a boss and, and a few bosses and we'll be done and this thing is just it's it's an adventure so <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think it's for everybody. Like I said, it's a little slower paced than I expected, but it's really cool. Um and they're doing some unique things, so and looks looks and sounds great. So All right, awesome. talk talk to me about all the games you want to talk about before you want to go. Oh god. Um Okay, so there's stuff that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh and I'm not really going to get into that other than, you know, uh I'm going to pre-order Halo and 
Uh, man, I don't even know. There's, there's okay. So much can I help you? Can I help you? Um, are you still playing Titanfall? I'm still playing Titanfall. I love Titanfall. Okay. Titanfall is fantastic, and I don't care about the story, and that's really all I care about. What's the next Xbox One game you're getting? <sighs> that's a hell of a hard question. Um, is Watch Dogs on your radar? Watch Dogs is on my radar. Okay. Even even without a. Uh, a demo, yeah. With, without the demo, I, I like. I, I'm sold. Just okay, be, fine. They're just being so shady with that game. Like they're just. It might be okay, but I'm just like, I think things can't be going well with the delays. It's you know had, what? So. I'm ordering it from Amazon, so if it sucks, I will return it, and they will give me my money back. Okay. <laughs> um, so it better be awesome. Anything else? Have um, your attention? Anything? You like? know, I, I got uh, I got through Bioshock Infinite, which. Mm-hmm was good it did not blow my mind as much this is a little bit ago but it did not blow my mind as much as uh the original bioshock did um they've had two dlcs the last one came out you know here's our our swan song and by the way we're going away Mm -hmm. as a studio uh although the one thing that i did notice was the review on polygon the the reviewer was really confused and I just wanted to be like, oh, you poor sweet boy. You didn't understand 12 Monkeys the first time you saw it. <laughs> like, this, it was not a complicated game, guys. Uh, I, I don't know how I feel about going back to Rapture. Uh, so I may not download those. Uh, I've heard oh, a lot hurt. of good... Come on. Well, I've heard a lot of good... I have limited time, man. That's true. Okay, that's that's absolutely fair. Like, yeah. And, and we, I don't know about whether or not I'm going to be able play the games with the baby born on and bouncing on the little exercise ball. Cause apparently that works. <laughs> uh, but you know, with, with that in mind, uh, I've heard a lot of good things about the new tomb Raider and, um, that'd be a fun mindless game for the, you. They've got the, you know, they've got the definitive edition. Is that what it's called? It's yeah. definitive edition, right? I think so. Uh, it's available for download. I might do that in the little time I've got left. Um, uh, but it's I might choice. just stick with Titanfall. I, I'm having fun with it. Titanfall. Like, Titanfall will be there. Like, I think you get. I think you need to get one more. One more flavor in. Well, I'll yeah. I'll be on the lookout for you. I'll see if I can't find you some deals too. Dropping fifty, forty bucks or whatever Tomb Raider is may not be the best selection with some other <laughs> options you have out there. Well, and there's always a million games on uh, Steam that yeah. I want to get. Yeah. I, some so, of them don't we'll even cost see, money. We'll, we'll see. And some of them don't cost money. <laughs> oh, or, this is my, my last... Here, here's my last video game thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, fuck you, Word with Friends. I can't play the game because it keeps... I open the game and the window comes up, and then it closes immediately it's and okay. I can't play. It's okay. It's causing a problem for me. You have your Android wrestling game, which blew my mind to find out that you... Are what? So- I didn't actually play that. I was talking about Words with Friends. <laughs> Wrestling. I didn't stupid. get that. I didn't get that at all. I really wanted to think you were you that were yelling at WWF, which everybody made fun of you for, and had World Wildlife <laughs> Fund references. But then yeah. you posted a screenshot of an Android like wrestling simulator game, and huh. I really wanted to believe that you you were playing that. So no wrestling, stupid. So you've left left me just completely disappointed. So that's how I wanted to leave the show. <laughs> well, thanks for hanging out and thanks for making time for us. Well, I know things have been crazy and uh, we can't wait to check in with you later in the year uh, when you're back with a controller in your hands and a baby in the other. <laughs> I hope to have the baby in or the controller in two hands and the baby in the harness. Okay. I mean, this, this looks somewhat like a, a climbing harness. I don't know. <laughs> You'll figure it out if anyone can. So uh, that's yeah. going to do it for tonight's show. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, we, d- we do all these shows live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. So come and hang out with us uh, Tuesday nights at 8. we got shows every week and some shows on the weekend, too. So um, that's it for tonight. We'll see you guys next time.